Bill Richmond's story is remarkable. A former slave who rose to prominence in the toughest sport of them all, bare knuckle boxing. He fought one of England's most cherished heroes, Tom Cribb, and earned the nickname the Black Terror along the way. Bill was born into slavery on Staten Island in the US. He and his mother were owned by Richard Charlton. However, at the age of 13, he earned his freedom by charming an English aristocrat named Lord Percy who had been dining at the slave owner's home. He and his mother acted as servants in the home and Bill used his wit and charm to impress the guest. Lord Percy would take him back with him to England where slavery had been abolished. He served the Percy household as a privileged paid servant at Almwick Castle, Northumberland. This afforded Bill a degree of prestige amongst the rigid class system in the UK. He took full advantage of his opportunity, teaching himself how to read and even going to school for an education. He would then go on to be an apprentice cabinet maker in the city of York at the age of 17. He first learned he could fight when he had to defend himself and a female companion he had been walking home. A brothel keeper named Frank Myers racially abused him in the street. Richmond gave him a savage beating in the street. This is where Richmond's story became an arc for racial equality. Boxing was seen at the time as an inherent British sport and a symbol of British toughness. Brits reveled in this image of toughness and masculinity, thinking themselves superior to men from other nations. When Richmond entered the arena of boxing, he helped change those perceptions. It showed that a black man could be just as tough as white British fighters, who symbolised masculinity and toughness. This also helped show that cultural appropriation is actually a source of good and a way to share, integrate and become one, rather than blocking people off and separating people by skin colour and their perceived cultural ownership. In 1796, Richmond would make his boxing debut against Dockey Moore from Sheffield. He battered Moore for 20 minutes until he quit because he could no longer see these bare knuckle fights could last hours and could include wrestling throws and headbutting depending on the rule set of that day. After establishing himself in the ring, he eventually earned himself a patron. This essentially was like a modern day sponsor or boxing promoter. A wealthy man would provide the fighter with a salary so he could focus his life on training and fighting without having to what. His sponsor or patron was Lord Camelford and with his backing he began training in London. In 1800 he would make his professional debut in Blackheath, London for a prize of 10 guineas. His opponent Green quit after 10 minutes declaring Richmond the winner. After a successful career, he would step up in class in 1805, again in Blackheath. He fought Yusup, the fighting Jew, beating him into submission. He also beat Jack the Coachman Holmes in Kilburn that same year. His prize money also grew in that time, earning him up to 100 guineas per fight. Much like later predecessors like Sugar Ray Robinson, Muhammad Ali and Prince Nassim, Richmond adopted a fleet-footed, revolutionary style. He was a smaller man in an era without weight divisions, so would move fluidly, hands loose and low and counter punches. In those days, boxers tended to stand and trade shots so this movement confused his unprepared opponents. This was tactical boxing rather than brawling. However, in order to become the champion, 
he would have to face an English folk hero named Tom Cribb. In comparison to Richmond, Cribb was a mountain of a man who was also tough as nails. Allegedly, Cribb had toughened his knuckles so much that horned calluses surrounded his skin. He could allegedly punch the bark off a tree. Cribb was 14 stone and 6 feet tall. This was at a time in which the average height in England was around 5 foot 5. So Cribb would have been a giant among men, much like modern day Goliaths like Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua. Cribb was a docker from Bristol who had fought against Napoleon in the Royal Navy. Understandably, the British public loved him. It seemed that he was the embodiment of all the English virtues of the time. Tough, strong, resilient and someone who would never surrender. Richmond, who was 16 years older and over 3 stone lighter, was the heavy underdog. Even his backer, Camelford, withdrew his support. However, this meant he renegotiated his promotional contract with another promoter for much more money. Camelford himself would meet his demise that year after being killed in a duel of honour. The Cribb-Richmond fight became an enormous event. It was front page news, even taking up more column inches than the sailing of Nelson's fleet at Trafalgar against the French Spanish fleet. This shows just how popular boxing was and just how much it was part of the British identity at that time. On the 8th of October the fight would take place in front of 10,000 people. Considering boxing was not officially legal, this was a tremendous crowd. Richmond took an early advantage, boxing on his feet and moving. Cribb was embarrassed in the ring as he could not land a punch. After 18 rounds, he dropped Cribb on the deck. During this era of boxing, this ended the round and a 30 second interval would commence. A fight would not be over until someone was knocked out or someone gave up. However, Cribb would not give up and his size advantage and youth started to wear down his opponent. The fight lasted for 60 rounds until Richmond was knocked out cold. In total, Richmond had a pro record of 17 wins and 2 defeats. But rather than wallow in defeat, he turned his newfound fame into a well paid career. In 1806, he opened his own boxing gym called Richmond's Rooms. This was London's first public boxing academy. And like modern celebrity personal trainers, he taught famous, wealthy people how to box as well as professional fighters. He taught British MPs the art of boxing as well as Lord Byron. He also became the landlord of a pub in Leicester Square named the Horse and Dolphin. This is also when he would have his chance at revenge over Cribb when Tom Molyneux walked through the door of his gym. He claimed to be an ex-slave from Virginia who won his freedom in a prize fight. He also claimed he was the American boxing champion. Unlike himself, his new prodigy could match the huge size of Cribb. He tested the waters with Molyneux with a trial fight against a Bristolian named Tom Tuff. Interestingly enough, this opponent was trained by Tom Cribb himself. Molyneux easily defeated Tuff, which helped set up a fight against Cribb. Richmond put Molyneux through a gruelling training camp but his fighter severely lacked discipline. He allowed his taste for wine and women to derail him. Richmond had always conducted himself with class like an English gentleman and grew tired of Molyneux and his uncouth behaviour. However, 
he put up with his antics for the chance to defeat Crib. That chance took place on the 18th of December 1810. This was to be the first ever World Boxing Championship and would be held at East Grimstead. This was the biggest fight in boxing history at that point. The two men, equal in height and weight, went straight at it for 18 rounds, toe to toe, blow to blow. In the 19th round, Crib was dropped to his knees against the ropes. However, this enraged the British crowd so much that some stormed the ring. A near riot ensued in the ring and Crib was able to use the time to recover his senses. Molyneux would suffer tremendous injuries in the fight, including a broken hand, a broken jaw and six shattered ribs. After 40 bloody, gruelling rounds, Crib would emerge victorious. But the win was in doubt, especially in the mind of Richmond, who immediately wrote a letter to Crib demanding a rematch. Bill would have to fork out 600 guineas of his own money for the fight. However, his fighter did not show him the respect of putting in the hard graft for the fight. In opposition, Crib, who had seemingly underestimated Molyneux in the first fight, entered into a rigorous training camp, much like the strength and conditioning coaches and nutritionists of elite boxers of today, he was given the very best training and diet. Top athletes from across the country were drafted in to help him train in secret. He soaked his fists in vinegar to strengthen the skin and he abstained from women. Molyneux, on the other hand, did the opposite. He drank and slept with women excessively, driving him clean off the rails. This infuriated Richmond as he could see his fighter throwing away the chance of glory for cheap thrills. The rematch took place in September 1811 and, as to be expected, Crib in prime condition destroyed the out of shape Molyneux. Richmond embarrassed at the defeat and enraged at Molyneux's lack of effort turned his back on the American. Molyneux was financially devastated by the split and was even jailed for unpaid debts. He became a shell of his former self as an alcoholic travelling boxer, fighting in fairs and carnivals for money. Only seven years after the rematch, in 1818, Molyneux died from liver failure at only 38 years old. From the 1830s onwards, boxing became out of fashion and the police started cracking down on boxing matches, as at this time it was still illegal. Ironically, Richmond's boxing gym was pulled down to make way for Nelson's Column and Trafalgar Square. However, Richmond had become a respected figure in the highest realms of English society. He also formed an unlikely friendship with Tom Cribb, who was perhaps one of the last people to see Richmond alive. Every Sunday they dined together at Cribb's pub named the Union Arms. On Sunday 27th of December 1829, Richmond returned home after his dinner with a cough and died the following day aged 66. In 1821, at age 58, he was honoured at the coronation of King George IV. Boxing has long been a sport that has driven social change for racial equality. But before Muhammad Ali used his platform to push for black rights in America, there was Bill Richmond, the first black boxing superstar who earned the respect and pride of British hearts. One writer wrote of Bill Richmond after defeating Tom Shelton in his last bout at age 50, 
impetuous men must not fight Richmond, as in his hands they become victims of their own temerity. The older he grows, the better pugilist he proves himself 